We are going to the village of Batodi, which I visited for the first time in 1989. In those days, this was a completely barren and degraded plateau. Virtually no trees. Somewhere around early 1990s, farmers began to use the Zai in this area uh, to rehabilitate the very degraded land. Uh, the technique had been introduced here by a, an ifat funded project in this region and they had brought farmers to the Yatenga, in particular to Yakuba Sawadago, where they sold the, uh, the technique and upon return they started testing it and it began spreading very, very quickly. Now we see the result here. This is a complete transformation on both sides of the road. And an interesting story with regard to Batudi is, when they got back there after 10 years in 2004, the farmers told that the water level in the wells had gone up by about 14 meters in 10 years time. <laughs> this is a remarkable place because in 1990 there was nothing here. This was just a barren degraded plateau and the people had great difficulties to survive. And now they started making zai, uh, planting pits and half moons in the early 1990s. When they got back here in 2004, they had four vegetable gardens and that was related to the fact that they had done the zai. So the water level in the wells came up because more water infiltrated into the soil. And when I got back here in January 2012, they already had 10 different gardens. And we are now looking at the garden uh, in, in June 2012. They are still cultivating, they are cultivating manioc, they are cultivating pepper and a lot of other crops. And if you look at the background, then you will see many trees that have emerged on what used to be barren land. And it emerged because the manure used in all these planting pits contained seeds from trees and that subsequently they protected and managed the trees. The, the water level in this well remains high, so I think it's, it's six meters deep because it's the end of the day and they have been irrigating and it fills up again during the night till about four meters deep. So it's, fill, it's filling up and it all has to do with the fact that, that so much water now in these fields is infiltrating rather than running off. I'm Chris Asari from Ghana, Ashanti region. Whenever I come to Niger, I travel up down here to convey onions to Ghana. So we see a lot of onions that are being stocked here. That, how many tons of onions are you going to transport back? When the scale was not being implemented, we used to take about 40, 45 tons. But now since the scale on the road that was started implemented, we, we, we reduced the tonnage and now I'm going to take 37 tons. 37 tons? Yeah. So normally, uh, when you go to Galmi and other places, you take 37 tons and yeah, you do that. Yeah, that is what we used to take now. And you do it two or three times a month during the whole year? The whole year, I can, I can come here more than even 10 times or 15 times, 20 times. So every year you transport at least 20 times 37 tons? Yes, in a year. That's a big quantity. going to teach us how to practice the managed natural regreening. So this is the reason why they leave three, four or five stems. So if you have a need now, you can now cut one, it will remain four. The follow, the follow, it will also regenerate the following year. It becomes vigorous. Yeah. Then you cannot either cut one or two, 
it will still remain something. something. Yeah. And those you cut, it will regrow. So it's a, a continuously regreening, 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 regreening. We are in the lowlands and farmers in these lowlands cultivate a whole series of crops. Manioc, sugarcane, uh, there are certain areas where they also grow rice, they have a number of fruit trees, they have date palms, so they exploit the whole area in a very judicious way. They are really precision farmers, they know exactly what kind of crops they can grow where. Crops that you normally would expect in areas with much higher rainfall, like sugarcane. We are here in an area with 400 50, 500 millimeters of rainfall and people cultivate sugar cane. If you go look at a mature baobab, yes. the value of the leaves of a mature baobab on an annual basis can go up to $70. Somewhere between $30 and $70 a year, depending on the time of the season yeah. that the leaves are being sold. Yeah. The leaves from this parkland here yeah. in Miria yeah. are so also sold, are exported to Sudan and to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Yes. So there is that whole international value chain yes. around the baobab leaves. Yeah. Yeah. And the fruits that are being produced can also be transformed into something that you use for your breakfast, uh, yeah. 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 a kind of a jelly. Yeah. 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 And if you would and live in the UK, in London, yeah. then you go to Herod yeah. and you buy one, uh, one little bottle of, of baobab jelly for 25 pounds. Yeah, that's great. That's ah, great. there is something. So this, there is no other park anywhere else in the Sahel where farmers have so systematically regenerated the young baobab as they have done here in Miria. The inspiration has been great. A lot of lessons have been learned that uh, we back to Nigeria, we need to talk to ourselves find a way of getting farmers together to know that this aspect can be done better in the environment because we have what it takes to do it. The farmers have to be motivated, have to be empowered, have to be made to believe in themselves that the land that presently they are seeing as degraded can come back in a few years time to be much more natural much more productive, much more economic than it is presently. I'm very happy about this visit because if we look at the Nigerian delegation members, some of them may have been a little bit skeptical when they came here, but it's really a matter of seeing is believing. I am very inspired uh, by what I have seen here and by what I have heard from the farmers, from the government officials. I am so much inspired that I'm already thinking of how we might implement such uh, a case in Nigeria. It was a pleasure for us to share knowledge on the success story of regreening a fort in the Nigeria Republic. Mm -hmm.